Hello and welcome to video one for week six. Last time we developed the idea of a vector valued function. Here we're going to give an interpretation for those vector valued functions. That's going to be the major interpretation that we're going to work with in this course and that interpretation is a parametric curve. So a parametric curve is a vector valued function. Uh, it starts on some interval in the real number lines and outputs a vector. Uh, it has to be continuous so we're not going to consider discontinuous functions. And we interpret it as position depending on time. So that this is some range in time, and that we're thinking of the vectors we output as the positions of some point as we're moving through time. That means the projection parametric curves are about motion through space, which means they're appropriate for modeling things like projectiles, for doing orbital mechanics, talking about satellites, for doing elementary particle motions and elementary particle physics, and for a bunch of other applications where you're talking about the motion of some object through space depending on time. The conventional symbol for a generic parametric curve is gamma, and the conventional input variable is t, and that's important to keep things straight because here we're going to have t, and here we're going to have variables x1 up to xn, or if it's R3, we're going to have x, y, z. We want to make sure that this variable doesn't mix up with these variables. We also want to signal that it's supposed to be depending on time. So the conventional input variable is t. When we draw a parametric curve, we typically draw only the output. So this is not like drawing the graph of a function. There's no t-axis here. The t is implicit. We think about motion in terms of t. So here's a very conventional example of the circle. Gamma of t is cos t sine t, and t is in the range 0 to 2 pi. So what happens if t equals 0? Well, cosine of 0 is 1, so the x-coordinate is 1. Sine of 0 is 0, so t equals 0 gives us 1, 0 at this point. What happens at t equals pi over 2? Well, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1. That gives me this point. When t is equal to pi, I get negative 1, 0. When t is equal to 3 pi over 2, I get 0, negative 1. I'm down here. And you can see that I'm just moving along this circle as time increases. That's why I've drawn this arrow here to indicate that this is not just a circle. This is a circle with a direction of motion around it. And then when I get back to 2 pi, I end up back to where I started. And parametric curves can self-intersect. They can return to where they started. If I kept going, I would, in fact, trace the same shape. Again, if my t was from 0 to 4 pi, I would just keep going around the circle another time. And I could keep doing that as often as I wished. So that notion of shapes, but also direction and movement, not just the circle, but it's the circle starting here, moving around, and ending back up here as at the end. Here's an example. Uh, here t is from 1 -fifth to 5. So what happens when t is 1 -fifth? Uh, Then gamma is equal to reciprocal of that is going to be 5, 1 -fifth. That gives me this point here, which is that x equals 5 and y equals 1 -fifth. Uh, what happens if t equals 2? Uh, that's going to be 1 half 2. That's already going to be well over here. What happens if t equals 3? 1 third 3. That's going to be over here. What happens if t equals 4? 1 quarter 4. That's going to be up here. And then t equals 5, I end up at 1 fifth 5 here. And we see that we get motion along the curve for different values of t. Notice that uh, t equals 1 is 1, 1, so it's sort of in here somewhere. Notice that I get all the way here from 1 fifth to 1, but then things slow down. I get 2, 3, 4, 5. So the rate of motion along the shape doesn't have to be uniform. It can be fast in some places and slow in other places. But the whole idea is that for different values of time, we start here, we end up here, we have different points along this curve. These can get complicated, all sorts of interesting and lovely shapes. So this is very much like the circle. The only thing here is instead of cos t, I have cos 2t. It starts at the same place, uh, t equals 0. Uh, t equals pi, it's still in the same place over here. And then t equals 2 pi, it returns here. But instead of doing what the circle did with a loop like this, it has this sort of weird zigzag shape. And what's happening is that the oscillation in the x-coordinate is happening faster. So in this shape, the x-coordinate was going from 1 to negative 1. 
And what I have here is the x coordinate goes down to negative 1 and then back to 1 again and then back down to negative 1. This cos 2 pi, I have twice as many oscillations, so the x coordinate is going to oscillate back and forth. The y coordinate still does the same thing of going up and going down, uh, but I get more oscillation in the x coordinate, so that's going to give me this winding shape instead of the circle. But still, I'm going as t goes along, I go here, I go here, I go here. Um, sorry, this should be t equals pi. Go here, go here, go here. End up t equals 2 pi back here. I want to talk about a special class of parametric curves called spirals. So they look like the circle. I have cosine and sine here. But they have the same function in both coordinates, in the x and the y coordinate, uh, which is some monotonic continuous function, either increasing or decreasing. And that's essentially going to change the radius. Uh, this thing that shows up in front of the sine and the cosine, that's the radius of the circle. If I have gamma of t equals 7 cos t, 7 sine t, that's a circle of radius 7. Here, this is a circle of variable radius. The radius is changing. I want it to be either increasing or decreasing. If the radius is increasing, I'm going to get circle that uh, a circle-like shape that just keeps increasing in radius. It's going to go outward. If the radius, if f is decreasing, I'm going to get something that spins inward. In either case, I'm going to get a spiral. So let me show you some examples of spirals. So here, the monotonic function is the increasing exponential function. And this works, in fact, for any real numbers. Um, this will circle in infinitely down there as t goes to negative infinity and as t goes to positive infinity. This radius is growing very quickly. And we see that in this exponential function is that the radius jumps from here to here and already these, these radii are getting very, very large. Logarithmic spiral is a spiral that grows very, very quickly. Lots of applications for this one, at least approximately in, in patterns of swirls and galactic shapes and all sorts of fluid dynamics things that at least approximately have some kind of logarithmic spiral type behavior. Uh, the Archimedean spiral is a spiral where the radius grows linearly. So you notice here, these are, are all equally spaced out is that the radius goes from here to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. So each loop around, we just add 1 to the radius. Uh, this is only for t starting at 0. I don't want a negative radius. That, that would be sort of strange for the interpretation here. So at t equals 0, I'm at the origin. And then I go out to radius 1. I go out to radius 2. I go out to radius 3, so forth and so on. Or perhaps radius 2 pi, radius 4 pi, radius 6 pi, if my um, I need to get 2 pi to have a full revolution. But the whole idea is that I have the same increment each time I come around a radius. And I can do this actually in three dimensions as well. So this is exactly the same as what we just had, the Archimedean spiral. But then I add a z coordinate. A parametric curve can output in as many dimensions as we want. So here I have the Archimedean spiral, and the z coordinate is increasing. So I have the same uh, shape in the xy plane but I pull it up and I just keep increasing the z-coordinate, so pulling the spiral up into this shape where it gets higher and higher as it gets further and further out in its linearly increasing radius, again, starting at zero and going out as far as you wish. The last thing I want to talk about in this introductory video is the possibility of using non-Cartesian coordinates. So my conventional parametric curve in R2, I have the first coordinate x depending on t, the second coordinate y depending on t, and th those give me my x and y coordinates depending on a certain point or certain input time in the parametric curve. I could also have described the radius and the angle in terms of t instead of the x and y coordinate if I wanted to do curves in polar coordinates. The circle in Cartesian coordinates, which we talked about at the start, was cos t sine t. If I put in values of t, those give me the x and y Cartesian coordinates of a circle. But if I instead, instead say that the radius is constant and the angle is just changing linearly, that's also going to give me a circle. That's these, I'm going to go around the angle, the angle is going to go around, I'm going to get all these points where the radius is fixed. So I can describe the same shape as a Cartesian parametric curve or as a polar parametric curve with the radius equal 1 and the angle equal t. And the same way I can do spirals, because the spirals have the same angle just going around and around, 
But now the radius is changing, and it's changing by some monotonic function, so the logarithmic spiral is a radius which is increasing, so that gives me my logarithmic spiral. Here's a radius that's increasing linear, that gives me my Archimedean spiral. All of these things can be described in polar coordinates as well as Cartesian coordinates. And we can use any coordinate system we want. In R3 we can use spherical or cylindrical coordinates. So there's no reason we can't describe a parametric curve using some other coordinate system. We're not going to do that terribly much in this course, but we'll do it every now and then, and it's a really valuable thing to be aware of, that all of these things that we're developing in this course can fit together. So the notion of alternative coordinate systems and the notion of parametric curves can be combined.